Good afternoon. I'm excited to be here at Time Machine today, and I'm looking forward to discussing a nation that is uh, shaping the future of artificial intelligence, which is uh, China. And I'll be uh, talking about how the AI revolution is playing out in China today and some of the implications uh, for the world we may all be living in in the future. So a couple of points I want to start with uh, to emphasize that uh, under Xi Jinping's leadership, the Chinese government is advancing an innovation-driven strategy both for economic development and for military modernization, aspiring to uh, lead the world in a number of strategic technologies, artificial intelligence prominently among them. And beyond this uh, high-level focus from Chinese leaders, it's also clear that uh, Chinese tech companies are indeed already at the forefront of global AI development and are now being harnessed by the government as uh, national champions in support of this uh, broader initiative. And increasingly, uh, China's approach to AI policy-wise also focuses on this technology as a means to enhance national competitiveness across all dimensions of power, from, uh, and from bolstering economic growth to uh, advancing military modernization. And uh, China's, China's AI ambitions have been quite clear and have frequently commanded headlines over the past couple of years, particularly with the new generation AI development plan uh, released in uh, July of 2017, which uh, rather boldly declared that China would lead the world in AI by 2030 and emerge as the world's premier AI innovation center in the process. And since then, this is just one of a number of plans and policies, both at the level of the central government and local governments throughout China. And uh, as of last December, yet another plan highlighted the importance of uh, China's uh, commitment to advancing AI industry and achieving uh, competitiveness across a range of different products going forward. And at the same time, uh, although some of these ambitions uh, that China has articulated should be taken with a degree of skepticism. Uh, execution remains to be seen, but there, is, there are reasons to take China's uh, trajectory in AI quite seriously, based on some of the natural advantages that China may bring to the table. And these include the availability of uh, rather unique and massive amounts of data uh, generated often by China's uh, netizens online, by their mobile devices, quite a diverse data ecosystem that's being of uh, being harnessed by a dynamic uh, tech eco uh, dynamic tech uh, sector that is hyper competitive and uh, all in on AI moving forward. And beyond this uh, fairly market driven orientation, there's also a uh, very active policy initiatives underway, including to advance some of the foundational infrastructure that can uh, that can enable AI to become more widely deployed throughout China's economy and society. And when you look at the numbers, China does uh, have the potential to lead as well based on the potential availability of talent, which uh, the Chinese government is seeking to advance through expanding educational opportunities and recruitment. There's also a commitment to high levels of support and funding for long-term research and development of AI going forward. And, this, and at th this point, I think it is worth raising the question, when you look at the trends today, is China leading already in AI? Or what does leading even mean or look like when we're talking about very, very diverse and disparate techniques, technologies, and applications? So keep that question in mind as I continue. And I think if you look at Chinese tech companies, as I mentioned, some of the uh, China's national team or national champions, which have been uh, harnessed to lead uh, open innovation platforms for China, Alibaba, which is focused on smart cities, uh, Baidu, which is, uh, had started to prioritize AI as a company even before Google did, and well before the Chinese government itself had highlighted this as a policy priority. And Baidu was actively working in smart driving and autonomous vehicles. Companies like Tencent are uh, leading AI labs and are also working actively on AI for medical applications. And companies like iFlyTech are also leaders in natural language processing. So again, there are a number of very successful companies that are at the forefront of this, that are often uh, quite closely tied to n state objectives as well. And at the same time, China has established a series of new national laboratories for artificial intelligence, focusing on technologies ranging from brain-inspired intelligence to deep learning to virtual and augmented reality. And uh, as the Chinese government continues to support funding for AI development, uh, aspiring to lead in indigenous innovation in some of the most cutting-edge technologies, these national laboratories 
kind of, which are often leverage partnerships among top companies like Baidu and leading universities like Tsinghua could be at the forefront of some of these future developments. And of course, there also are a number of Chinese startups. Uh, here are a few among the thousands of AI enterprises in China today. DJI, which is a leader in commercial drones. Uh, Sense Time, which has been quite successful in uh, computer vision, especially for surveillance purposes. And also companies like Horizon Robotics, which are looking to, uh, lo looking to lead in, in the development of new AI chips and hoping to overcome China's uh, traditional shortcomings and semiconductors in the process. And what, what applications are a priority in China today? Many of them uh, would fall under the category of AI for good, so to speak, a focus on AI in education, healthcare, even agriculture, elder care, really a fairly utilitarian approach to leveraging AI across all elements of the Chinese economy and society where it could, uh, where it could be impactful, but also there is uh, undeniably a darker and more troubling dimension of China's AI ambitions and developments, which we can see playing out particularly in Xinjiang today, given the uh, utility of these technologies to augment censorship and surveillance, uh, thus bolstering the regime's coercive ca uh, capacity in ways that can be quite concerning when we think about the future of human rights in China and indeed uh, challenges to, to democratic governance around the world going forward. And again, when we're thinking about uh, who, who is leading in AI or whether, whether we should see this as a race. I think one question to raise is do we even know the right metrics to start to evaluate how China compares to the rest of the world? To go through a couple, if you look at uh, data for publications, and this is just highly cited papers, China's been at the forefront uh, or surpassing the US as early as 2013 or so based on a couple, couple different measures. And this does again highlight that China's emergence as an AI powerhouse does predate the Chinese government's uh, focus on this technology as a policy priority and intentions to make China into an AI superpower. If you look at patents, uh, China still is behind the US, but increasingly, uh, increasingly rapidly, uh, rapidly expanding its patent filings year by year and could be, of course, to perhaps surpass the US. 22% uh, of the world's patents as of last year, I believe, and again, up, an upward trend here as well. If we look at more of a uh, qualitative uh, indicator, so to speak, in terms of the increasing quality of AI research, there's not, not only the fact that uh, some of the world's leading AI conferences this spring had to reschedule because they corresponded with Chinese New Year, and we've seen increasing participation by Chinese researchers in top international conferences, but also quite active uh, success in a range of competitions, such as Web Vision and ActivityNet this fall, looking variously uh, le leveraging China's strengths in computer vision and, and analysis of video imagery. And I think it is significant that companies like Baidu and universities like Beihang University are, are starting to top the leaderboards in a couple of these international challenges. Again, uh, if we're thinking about where China might go in AI going forward, some of the relevant metrics to look at would include levels of funding and China received uh, both in terms of private investment, but also increased to government support for long-term research and development. If we look even just at uh, investment alone, China received 27 billion in 2017, and Chinese AI startups are starting to receive more funding year by year than US AI startups. And this is in addition to the uh, tens of billions that are being spent by the central government and local governments of China to su provide support for long-term research and development, as well as the active uh, de deployment of applications and construction of a dynamic AI industry. Yeah, and I think if we're thinking about China's potential to emerge as a true superpower in AI, I think one of the critical metrics to watch going forward will be talent. And this is, this is a domain, so to speak, where the US is leading for now, especially in terms of top talent. But where China does have the potential to emerge as a true center of innovation, if you look at the increasing number of researchers today and, and the number of graduates who could, uh, who could move the field forward in the future, and rapid increase in the number of STEM, STEM graduates, uh, which the Chinese government is seeking to trend that they're building upon through massively expanding educational opportunities in AI. Going forward, uh, is this an AI arms race or an AI cold war? Are the US and China the two leaders in this field by far? And what are the implications for the world? I think, uh, I think it is clear that China has, has emerged as a global powerhouse in AI. 
and uh, and at the same time there are a lot of uh, a lot of synergies and potential cooperation between China and the U.S. in this ecosystem, including a range of partnerships between U.S. and Chinese companies. So it is not a zero-sum game entirely, but there is a there is an element of competition here, and there is uh, there are reasons for concern that uh, that given current geopolitics, the trajectory of these developments could become more fraught going forward. Again, despite all of the hype and enthusiasm about AI in China, both within China and around the world, we shouldn't overlook some of the major challenges that China is continuing to confront in AI development, and this includes, uh, despite the availability of, a high, of large amounts of talent, there's still a bottleneck relative to the demands for it. China's still struggling in hardware, particularly in trying to develop indigenous semiconductors. It's lagging behind in high-end research and results, though that too is starting to change. And even the massive amounts of investment that I described do raise the question of could we see an AI bubble in China if some of this enthusiasm overtakes the reality of advances and the uh, over 13 AI unicorns in China, many of them are truly dynamic, su successful companies, but there are reasons to question whether some of, whether there may be a degree of a uh, bit of a bubble going on as well. So that'll be something to watch going forward too. And again, I think the Ch Chinese government will also struggle with challenges and risks in terms of safety and security as they rapidly start to deploy these still quite nascent technologies and applications. And at the same time, uh, beyond, beyond their indigenous innovation ecosystem, China is also seeking to leverage tech and talent internationally, including through uh, investments, acquisitions, and partnerships overseas, setting up research centers in places like Silicon Valley and Boston, and in some cases, uh, taking advantage of academic cooperation to access uh, tech and talent in ways that can advance dual-use research, as a, a colleague's recent report uh, had highlighted the PLA, the Chinese military, is often quite active in these sorts of collaborations as well. So I think that's a, quite a, a troubling case study here as well. And at the same time, as we've seen with recent indictments of Chinese intelligence officers, there continues to be some amount of cyber and, and human espionage, particularly targeting areas where China still faces major bottlenecks or shortcomings, again, such as semiconductors. And I think this, uh, it's important to recognize that China's quest to lead in AI is occurring against the backdrop of a broader national agenda for innovation that Xi Jinping has personally highlighted that recognizes both the challenge and also the opportunity for China to catch up and try to leapfrog in new frontiers of technology in which the U.S. or indeed no nation currently has or may achieve a clear advantage. And this includes, of course, a focus on military innovation and Chinese, China's military strategy, and Xi Jinping in, in his capacity as chairman of the Central Military Commission, along with leading Chinese military officers, have all highlighted the importance of leveraging these disruptive technologies to advance military innovation, and potentially uh, seize the opportunity to surpass the U.S. military in the process through uh, taking the turn more sharply, so to speak, as the expression goes, and uh, ha having an advantage to really become a pioneer, not just, a, not just playing catch up and advancing new kinds of military capabilities. I think it is also clear that uh, Chinese leaders at the level of Xi Jinping recognize that AI will be integral to the future of strategic competition and indeed the global balance of power. And just, just a few weeks ago, speaking at a, a study session on the topic, uh, she himself highlighted the importance of new generation development for China to seize the initiative in global science and technology competition. He's also highlighted the importance of advancing AI for military purposes, so the concept known as military intelligentization and improving future combat capabilities going forward. So again, this will, this is, this will be a trend to watch as we think about what the, uh, what the U.S. is starting to see as a new era of great power rivalry. And if China could have certain systemic advantages along the way, given their attempts to advance a strategy known as military civil fusion that seeks to leverage synergies among uh, academic, defense, and commercial developments going forward, which is manifested in everything from demonstrations of swarming to partnerships that harness some of China's national champions to work on applications like military command information systems. And when we think about uh, future combat scenarios, uh, this particular image, which I came across in China's military museum in Beijing, does again highlight how applications like swarming could be integral to how the PLA thinks about uh, future warfare. So in conclusion, I think it's fair to say that uh, despite and beyond the hype, China's quest to lead an AI could 
alter the global balance of power, given the importance of this technology to uh, national competitiveness going forward. And although this has, although technological advantage has been a key pillar for the U.S. and our national competitiveness, China clearly is catching up across a range of technologies and applications. And the question of who will lead in AI, I think, will remain uh, highly contested, depending on which which particular techniques and applications we're looking at going forward. And I hope this has been a uh, reasonable start to a broader conversation on challenges of uh, tech and policy, and looking forward to uh, continuing the conversation going forward.